Hello everybody and welcome to another video and today we're having a bit of a throwback Tuesday. I know it's normally Thursday but today's Tuesday and it just fits. So we're going to be looking at a band that I do know uh, and a song that I know very very well and it's a band called Pop Will Eat Itself. Now I can't say that I'm a big fan of the band. I mean, I really, really like the band. I really like the music, but I can't say I'm a big fan because I've only ever listened to the one album, uh, which is Dos Didos Mis Amigos, uh, which was released in 1994. Um, I really should get around to listening to some more of their music. I don't know why I've never actually explored any of their other albums, but there you go. Um, I mean, I first heard this band many, many years ago when I met my first ever girlfriend and she had this track Ich bin ein Auslander um, and it was on uh, I think it was on a compilation album and asked you know who, what the song was and who it was by because I really really liked the track and she told me you know it's it's pop will eat itself um, so I went out and bought Dusty Dust Mis Amigos just because I really liked that track and ended up really enjoying the album um, so, little information about the band. Uh, they are an English alternative rock brand, rock band even, formed in Starbridge, uh, and originally formed in 1981 under the name From Eden, uh, with members including Clint Mansell, Adam Mole, Chris Fragley, um, Malcolm Treese, and Miles Hunt. Uh, Treese and Hunt later moving on to form the band The Wonder Stuff, which, you know, I didn't know that. Um... From Eden then recruited Graham Crabb to replace Hunt on drums before splitting up. Crabb, Mole and Mansell recruit, then recruited Richard March and changed their name to Wild and Wandering, uh, known locally as Blind and Blundering because they always apparently performed whilst very intoxicated whilst on stage. <laughs> The name of that band came from a Wasted Youth album under and they released one EP... Uh, 2000 Light Ales from Home, um, before eventually turning into the band as it is now, Populate itself, in 1986. Uh, the new name was taken from a quotation in an NME article on Jamie Wednesday by David Quantic. Uh, now, the band was initially known as a Grebo act. Uh, Grebo was a short lived subgenre of alternative. A rock that sort of incorporated influences from punk rock, electronic dance music, hip hop, and sort of psychedelic uh, music. And it, it was sort of late 80s, early 90s um, in the UK, uh, sort of scene before um, Britpop and grunge sort of became really, really popular uh, musical genres. Um, the band then changed their style to incorporate more sample-driven indie and industrial sounds. Um, their highest charting single was in 1993 with the top 10 hit Get the Girl, Kill the Baddies. Um, after initially disbanding in 1996 and having a brief uh, reformation in 2005, uh, they released their first track in more than five years in 2010. Um, and I do believe... They released an album in 2015, I think was the last album that they released. Um, but today we're going to be looking at a track called Underbelly, which is a track that I, I think is absolutely fantastic. It's one of my favourite tracks off the Dusty Dos Mis Amigos album. Um, I've got some lyrics here, so we'll have a look at the track and discuss it afterwards. So let's just jump into it. When I say jump into it, I've been talking for four minutes. So Underbelly by Populate Itself. Take the 
So there we go. Underbelly by Pop Will Eat Itself. Now, like I said, I, I really love that track. I think it's great, and it does actually contain um, a couple of lines that I absolutely, I absolutely love the lines. I think they are brilliant. Now, in in a way, I think this song sort of talks about the state of the world and the way that the media and stuff like that sort of get into your head and spread fear and lies and that sort of thing. That's what I, that's what I think it's about. Um, especially because of my favorite line of the song. Um, so the line, the, the line, the lyrics even goes, take a glimpse of the world as your vision unfurls in the words of Monty Burns. Hello, cruel world. This is a place once said was great, but make no mistake, it's only fear and hate that makes the wheels go round, the trapdoor sound, as you hear as you hang, as it all goes bang. Life loves the winner, join the losers and the sinners in the underbelly town. And then it sort of goes into what you can kind of, <clears throat> excuse me, what you can kind of call the chorus, where he just says the underbelly town a couple of times, and it's got that sort of female vocalising behind it, which I really like actually, just that vocalisation you know, that female vocalisation behind the chorus when he's saying underbelly town, I think that sounds awesome I think it really adds some, you know really makes this song really pop, um, no pun intended but there in the opening words, uh, in the opening lines, take a glimpse of the world as your vision unfurls in the words of Monty Burns, Hello, Cruel World. Now, Monty Burns could possibly be a reference to uh, the beloved Simpsons character, Montgomery Burns. Uh, of course, The Simpsons was quite popular in the 1990s when this album came out, but it could also be a reference to Cockney rhyming slang, Um given that they are from the West Midlands. Uh, it could be a reference to rhyming slam, Monty Burns being a sort of slang term for um, ecstasy. Uh, and it says, this is a place once said was great, but make no mistake, it's only fear and hate that makes the wheels go round. So, you know, everybody said that, you know, this was a great place, you know, this was, this was fantastic, but now there's so much fear-mongering and violence and stuff that that just seems to be the only thing left in the world at the moment um and it says that uh, you know life loves a winner join the losers and the sinners in the underbelly town so it's sort of like you know come join us and slum it with the rest of us sort of thing you know because the, the world's turning to and you know you might as well join us because that's really all that you can do you know um Carries on. I can see their faces, souls of non-sinners made unclean by the rolling of the machine. I see the pressure from the pages on, of the TV. They're out to get you, out to get me. Fear shakes the hand of the man as he does what he can. It's the 90s for the family plan. And then comes my favourite couple of lines in the song. And the woman is led by the crap she's fed, convinced by the mirror that her figure's getting bigger. And again, you know, I can see the faces, souls, and non-sinners made unclean by the rolling of a machine. I see the pressures from the pages of the TV. They're out to get you, out to get me. Again, this is the media causing fear and panic and sort of artificially inflating stories to make things seem a lot worse than they really are. You know, using using fear to try and control the masses the same way the government does, you know. And it says the pressure from the pages of the TV, they're out to get you, out to get me. You know, they're out to try and do anything they can to, to, to control you in a way, you know, to, to just be a consumer and take their product, believe their truth, as it were. Uh, Fear shakes a man of the hand of the man as he does what he can. It's the 90s for the family plan. Um, not 100% sure of that, you know, maybe it's just like, um, you know, the fear of losing his family and stuff to, you know, to make him go in for all these things like 
health insurance and you know life insurance and stuff like you know all this stuff that these companies try and push and you saying you know this will improve your way of life whereas all they're really saying is i want your money and then like i said it comes my favorite line the woman is led by the crap she's fed convinced by the mirror that her figure's getting bigger i love the line i love the way it's performed in the song and i love what it means because you know all these magazines and all these tv shows and all, all this stuff at the moment which is like you know, i say at the moment i mean this was back in 1994 uh, but you know the way that um magazines and tv and stuff like that make out that women are only beautiful if they're thin you know if they're like if they weigh less than a paper clip and you can knock them over with a stiff breeze you know the, th- the fact that thin is the only way to be beautiful and you know You'll never make it if you're overweight. You're you're hideous if you're if you've got extra weight on. If you've got curves and that, you know. And she's convinced by the mirror that her figure's getting bigger, you know, because she's now got such a negative body image because of the bullshit and the crap that's come from TV and magazines telling her that she's ugly. She's now got like body dysmorphia. So every time she looks in the mirror, she she she's disgusted by herself. So now. She's making herself really ill trying to lose weight that she doesn't need to lose. Uh, you know, I, I just, like I said, I just love that line. You know, so it's a really, really quite a powerful line. Um, then it goes back into that uh, chorus bit with that female vocalising where he goes, the underbelly town, uh, the underbelly town, down, yeah, the underbelly town. Then he goes into a sort of bridgish sort of section where he goes, this stuff is never enough. This stuff is never enough. This stuff is never enough. Enough, enough is never enough. Now, I'm not sure what he's referring to there. Um, maybe it's like the media saying, you know, it, it's never, what we're doing is never enough. We need to push more onto them. Um, I'm not sure. And then it goes back into that chorus, the underbelly town, the underbelly town, down here, the underbelly town, and then back into that bridge. This stuff is never enough. This stuff is never enough. This stuff is never enough. Enough, enough, enough is never enough. And then the song comes to a close. So, you know, it's it's a relatively short song. That there aren't that like a huge amount of lyrics to the track, but I, I really like the track. I love the way it's performed. And like I said, the way it seems to be talking about the way that, um, you know, TV and media seem to be pushing stuff onto you, creating fear and hate in a way to sort of control you, you know, and, you know, force you into living your life the way they think you should live it rather than how you should live it. You know, it's, it's, I mean, if that is, if I'm reading it right, I mean, that's how I've, in how I've always interpreted it. You know, it's sort of like, that's still relevant today. I mean, like I said, this song came out in 1994. So they would have written this song maybe a year or two before the album came out. You know, so you're looking around, like you're looking at the very early 90s where this sort of thing was being spoken about. And it's still very relevant today. You know, and <laughs> we're, we're a long way off 1990. <laughs> so, you know, it's it's a very relevant song. It's it's a brilliant performance, I think. You know, I, I just love it. And, you know, I love the whole Dos Didos Mis Amigos album. Um, but I really should get around to listening to some of their other albums. Because, like, like I said, this is the only album of theirs I've ever heard. I've never heard, I've not even heard a track off another album. And if I have, I haven't known about it. So I really, I really should listen to some more of their music. I think, <laughs> but you know, like I said, I, I love this track. I love this album. I, I just think they're a great band. Um, but yeah, there you go. Um, a lot of the other um, tracks on the album as well uh, seem to cover um, real world topics. There's a track on there called. Familus Horribilis, or Family Horribilis, which I believe is actually talking about the British royal family, um, if I remember the lyrics correctly. I'm pretty sure it's talking about the British royal family, you know, but, you know, the, the, they do cover a bunch of topics in in their tracks, you know, so 
There we go. But I can't think of what else to say, so I'm going to leave that as it is. Uh, now, if anybody would like to suggest a track for me to react to, then please do so by all means. Uh, drop a comment in the comment section below or message me on my Facebook or my Instagram, or you could even men uh, message me through my Patreon, where you could also help to support this channel, which would, of course, be a massive help um, to me, because... Um, you know, I make absolutely nothing from any of the content that I create for this channel because it all gets immediately demonetized and everything goes to the artists uh, whose material I use. You know, and I can understand that to a certain degree. You know, I am using their material and it's only fair that they get recognition for that. And the fact that they're getting all of it, I'm not so OK with. But, you know, there's nothing I can do about that. So, you know. If you want to help support this channel, help me sort of maybe improve uh, the quality of what we've got going on here, you know, possibly get this um, backdrop finally looking a bit more interesting. Um, maybe improve my equipment because I'm filming this on a really cheap 1080p webcam. Um, you know, it'd be really helpful. But there you go. Um, there is an option in Patreon where you can get your suggestion jumped to the front of the queue, should you so desire it. Um, there is a limit on how frequently you can do that. I think it's limited to once a month. And that's just to be fair to people who suggest tracks through uh, regular means like Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube comments. Uh, and if you do suggest track through those means, do know it could take me a while to get around to your suggestion, since I do get suggested a lot of new tracks every single day. Um, my list grows faster than I can record the videos, but I do write down every suggestion I get, so it should get done eventually. It just might take me a while to get around to it. Also, Metalhead Reacts is a proud supporter of the Sophie Lancaster Foundation, a British-based charity whose goal is to put an end to hate crimes. And one of the main facets of that is hate crimes aimed at people of the alternative culture. And that's something I believe in very, very strongly, because it's something that's been going on for decades, but it's always been ignored. It's sort of been brushed to the side and, you know, just not classed as a problem. And that, that's something that really, really needs to change, because, you know, every day all around the world, people from the alternative community are getting violently and brutally attacked just purely for the fact that they listen to alternative music. And, you know, we're not talking about, like, insults being shouted or getting shoulder bumped as you walk down the street. We're talking about real brutal violent crimes where people are getting violently beaten. And, you know, people are getting hospitalised with broken limbs and sometimes even more life-threatening injuries uh, just purely for the fact that they listen to alternative music. And... You know, like I said, this sort of thing, it's been going on for decades, you know, this sort of thing's been happening since before I was born, but it's something that's never, ever been addressed, it's never been spoken about. The last time there was any widespread conversation about this was about 14 years ago, when Sophie Lancaster and her boyfriend Rob Maltby were violently and brutally attacked by a group of five or six people. They were beaten, punched, kicked, knocked to the ground, and had their heads stamped on so violently that they both ended up in comas. Now, Rob Melby, he did thankfully survive the attack. He was in a coma for a little bit over a week and a half, I think. I can't remember exactly how long. But he did thankfully survive. Sophie Lancaster, on the other hand, was in a coma for 13 days before she succumbed to her injuries and she died. This young woman was 20 years old and she was beaten to death just purely for the fact that she liked alternative music and alternative fashion. Now, at the time, this was all over the news, as rightfully it should have been. And as all things do over time, you know, other news stories came in and it sort of faded away. But since that happened 14 years ago, nothing else has ever been said or reported on, on a similar vein. But I know for a fact there have been several hundred, if not several thousand, similar cases in that space of time. And nothing has ever been said. Just a couple of years ago, there was a young woman in Scotland. She was running a charity gig, and at one point during the evening, she had to leave the venue for whatever reason and go back to her home, which was a five-minute walk away from the venue. In the time from her leaving the venue to getting to her house, she was attacked twice by the same group of people, violently, brutally beaten, kicked, punched, and knocked to the ground, and violently attacked twice, within a very short space of time. Now, thankfully, a passing taxi driver had put an, an end to this violent attack. And, you know, he didn't stop to see if she was okay. He just buggered off. She didn't get any help until she went back to the venue to where her friends were. 
but this wasn't in the news. You know, th- this happened in Scotland. I can walk to Scotland from where I live. This wasn't in the news. This wasn't on the TV. This wasn't in the papers. Why not? I didn't hear about this until a friend of mine told me about it, and he lives even further away from Scotland than I do. And the only reason I, you know, he knew about it was because it was his friend. It was a friend of his that was attacked. But why wasn't this in the news? You know, we hear about all these other hate crimes on a daily basis, sexism, racism, homophobia, transphobia, religious hatred, ableism. We hear these every single day in every in every facet of the media, whether it's newspapers, TV, radio, what have you. We hear everything about these every day from the most heinous and violent of these crimes where someone is murdered because of the colour of their skin or their sexual orientation, or their religious beliefs, down to the most petty and pathetic of these crimes, where some entitled white woman is calling the police because a family of colour are having a picnic in a public space. We hear these daily. So why can't we hear about these people that are getting violently and brutally attacked just because of their taste in music? Do, do we not deserve to hear about this? Do, do people from the metal community not deserve the justice? No one is more deserving of justice than anyone else. Just because we are, just because we listen to alternative music doesn't mean that we're exempt. But, you know, I can guarantee if someone dies as a, as a consequence of one of these violent violent attacks, then it will get spoken about. But that's unacceptable. We shouldn't have to wait for someone to lose their life before this gets spoken about. We shouldn't have to wait for someone to die before something gets done. And this is what the Sophie Lancaster Foundation is all about. They want to bring more attention to the fact that this sort of thing is happening, the fact that this is going on, and they want more people to do something about it. So, you know, we can prevent these sort of violent attacks from happening, and so that what happened to Sophie Lancaster will never happen again. Because it's something that never should have happened in the first place. But it's something we most certainly cannot allow to ever happen again. But if we carry on ignoring it the way people are, it's only a matter of time before it happens again. So if you'd like to find out more about the Sophie Lancaster Foundation, there is a link to their website in the description below. You can go over there, find out what they're working on at the moment, find out what their overall goal is, because they can explain it a lot better than I can. Um... And if you can help them out in any small way, you know, whether it be a small donation through their website or something as simple as one of these Sophie wristbands or maybe even that one, you know, they've got a whole bunch of um, other really cool stuff over there. Um, But, you know, the smallest amount can make the biggest difference. And the sooner we bring more attention to this, the sooner we get more people talking about this, the sooner we can help to stamp out prejudice, hatred and intolerance everywhere. But I'm going to leave that as it is for the time being. Thank you all very, very much for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye bye. Remember this man by the crowd, she said